Assalamu alaikum, peace be upon you all. This is your host Amina Ahmed and you're watching Muslim Network TV. Welcome back to another episode of Next Gen where we speak with today's change makers, the change makers of our generation. You're watching us on Galaxy 19 Satellite, MuslimNetwork.tv, Amazon Fire TV, Roku, and soon on Apple TV as well. Today's change maker back in 2018, Alexandra Collins discovered that for 30 years, industrial sterilization company Sterogenics had been emitting high levels of ethylene oxide, which is colorless gas near homes and schools in her neighborhood. And coming from a community which already suffers from a cancer rate nearly nine times higher than the nation's average and learning that those in her community weren't really aware of the dangers of this gas, she decided to take a stand and her and her sister built the organization Students Organize Against Ethylene Oxide. She's working with elected officials. She's campaigning, protesting out on the streets and lobbying as well in order to ensure the ban of this gas near schools and uh, neighborhoods. So Alex, the work you do is absolutely phenomenal. You're 16 years old, right? You're a junior in high school. You are extremely young and the work you do speaks for itself. And I think that it's an absolute honor to have you here. So thank you. Thank you, Amina. It's an honor to be here. <laughs> awesome. And Alex, I want to ask you, right? What motivated you, motivated you to co-found with your sister, Students Organized Against Ethylene Oxide? What inspired that move? There are so many things that inspired me to start this organization. Um, back in 2018, when we found out that ethylene oxide was being emitted into my neighborhood, I was really surprised. I didn't know that um, this gas was being emitted and causing us to have this health crisis in my own community. Um, and so that was one of my largest motivations because I knew myself as a student, I was really surprised that my school was located only around three miles away from this facility, um, which was also considered part of a danger zone um, mm -hmm. for negative health effects such as cancer in the future. And so since I was surprised, I knew that the students around me would also be surprised. And so talking to my peers, I realized that a lot of students didn't know that ethylene oxide was being emitted into our community. And that's why I wanted to start SATO so that we could spread more awareness about ethylene oxide and its cancer causing properties um, to my peers, as well as the fact that many of my friends, um, families and other people that I know have cancer because there is such a high cancer rate in my neighborhood um, mm -hmm. and knowing these people and hearing their stories and seeing them suffer from this terrible disease, seeing their families suffer from this terrible disease um, and being stressed with medical debts, stuff like that. It's really terrible. And um, seeing those people surround me every single day in my own neighborhood was a huge inspiration to continue my work. That is amazing, right? That you saw an issue in your neighborhood. You saw an issue that is so close to you, right? Close to your school, close to the people that you're surrounded with. And you decided to take it head on. But I want to ask you, what were some of the demands that you had initially? And what are some of the demands that carry on to today of your group, Sato? Well, initially, we really focused on the facility close to my neighborhood. Um, that was located in Willowbrook, Illinois. And... Uh, we wanted to shut down the facility permanently from our neighborhood because it was actually temporarily shut down by the Illinois EPA um, once the news came out that it was emitting this cancer-causing gas at high levels. Um, but we wanted to make sure that it was permanently removed so that we didn't have to ever breathe um, this air during school. Um, and so that was our primary demand. And luckily, actually, um, in fall of 2019, the facility closed due to community pressure from groups like ours. And that was a huge win for us. But we know that there are lots of facilities operating right now that are emitting this cancer-causing gas. And so that's been a huge goal for organization. Um, we have tw currently 12 chapters across the U.S. and two representatives in both Mexico and Guatemala. And through these different groups um, and chapters, we are fighting for stronger legislation on ethylene oxide emissions, particularly near schools. Um, our main goal is a three mile radius at least um, because my school was located around three miles from the facility mm -hmm. and we were considered in a high risk zone. Um, but we are really fighting for specific legislation to protect students from this gas near schools. <laughs> 
Well, and, and I hear that, you know, you've been able to have 12 chapters across the country, but also outside of the United States as well, in Mexico, and you said Guatemala. How has that looked like for you and, and your group? Has it been, you know, difficult to connect with people uh, so far away? Or tell us about that. Yeah, that's always interesting to think about. Um, I'm actually Latina, so um, mm -hmm. connecting with people from Guatemala and Mexico was um, something important to me because ethylene oxide is admitted in some Latin American countries, um, such as Costa Rica, and so it's important to um, have a diverse group of people to help raise awareness in their own um, areas and countries. And also the fact that ethylene oxide is an international issue. Um, there is actually an explosion in Spain and a couple, might be a year ago, more than a year ago, but um, there's an ethylene oxide explosion which killed, um, I think, around two people. And so it really is an international issue as well outside of just the United States. And while we do mainly focus on legislation in the U.S., um, national legislation, because that is where um, we live, <laughs> it's important to also spread awareness across um, the globe because people live in areas across the globe that are also affected by this gas. And so that's why we really, um, it's critical for us to have representatives in different countries to raise more awareness about the issue. Right. And and you and your organization have received national recognition, right? Um, you were the recipient of the Brower Youth Award as well uh, just this year. How does that make you feel about the work that you're doing? You started off two years ago and you're already getting this type of recognition. You're already moving things and, you know, you shut down that facility. That is a big deal. You, along with obviously other allied groups, um, you're getting work done and you're getting recognition for it. So I want, I want to know, like, your feelings about all of that and how how are you at right now? Well, I'm very grateful for being a recipient of this year's uh, Brower Youth Award because the award really um, inspired me to continue my work as well as it was a great way for Sato to be supported as an organization, as a non-for-profit. Um, they really gave us a lot of support and that's something I'm really grateful for. And because of that, I'm also really proud. I'm proud of all the work that our group does. Um, especially because this past year we launched the ETO Free Project, which mm -hmm. is a group of um, a couple of girls that uh, have designed and coded our own website and we review ethylene oxide uh, free beauty products. And that's something I'm really proud about um, being a group of all girls. And we learned ourselves, we're all self-learned coders. And that's really amazing because I know it's a lot really difficult for a lot of girls to learn how to code being put in an environment where there aren't that many people who quite look like them and mm -hmm. um, I'm overall it's just a feeling of <laughs> being proud of uh, the people in my organization because they're all really incredibly hard workers that believe and are passionate about this issue and really want to see change. Amazing. And you said it's a group of all young girls, right? That is beautiful. I don't think that we see that as much as we should. And being young people, we generally want, you know, others to look up to, but then creating that change ourselves is a different level. And, you know, you said you feel grateful and proud and I, and I was nodding along because I feel like I feel proud uh, of you guys as well and the work that you're doing. For sure. But, I'm um, so yeah. proud of the, the yeah. girls who we are. Uh, they'll be texting me at like 2 a.m. in the morning asking me about like a coding issue or telling me that they found out how to solve a coding issue. I, I really am proud of how hard they have worked. Yeah. yeah, amazing. And and the fact that they're able to have a leader such as yourself, you know, must also make you feel uh, grateful for that. But um, Alex, you are also doing a lot of lobbying work, right? With elected officials, with those who, who should represent us. What has the response from them look like? There's been a varying response. Um, I, I actually last, in 2019, May of 2019, I attended a, um, a community meeting that was held for the neighborhood and there were EPA officials, EPA scientists, government officials, legislators, legislators, um, and they were there for the community to answer questions that people had. And I attended there um, and went to ask some questions about ethylene oxide in our community and specifically about students and the cancer risks that we hold um, and different signs we can look out for, um, especially if we've been exposed to ethylene oxide for a long period of time. So I remember specifically asking an EPA doctor about the different signs that students like me who had been exposed uh, to ethylene oxide for a long period of time should be looking for. 
And she responded to me with the response, students shouldn't smoke in order to not get cancer. And this was something that I was really surprised about because I asked a question about ethylene oxide <laughs> at an ethylene oxide uh, community meeting to an EPA doctor who's an adult. Um, really, I was really concerned about my health risk. And she told me that students didn't smoke in order to <laughs> avoid getting cancer. And that's a completely flippant response. She completely ignored my concerns about the gas in my community and my health concerns. And so I remember asking it again and rephrasing it because I thought maybe it was unclear. Yeah. Um, she she responded with a similar response really and um and that was some moment that felt that i as a youth like i felt that she didn't really feel that it was necessary to have to have a response um that really fulfilled what i was asking for um and my concerns and that made me feel very like not powerful um feel like my voice didn't matter and that's something that i don't want other youth to feel and so i think it's really important that youth um step up to the plate and they realize that their voices do matter especially when the questions that they're asking are concerning their own health their own personal health the, the health of their family their future um and their safety and so they shouldn't be afraid to really step up to the plate and um, take action when action needs to be taken Right. And I, and I was going to ask you, right, has have you ever felt like your age was an issue? And, you know, it seems like other people perceive it to be an issue. But is that a general theme or are they just specific, you know, incidents that you don't feel like reflect your experience as a whole? Well, there are different situations that I've been in where I felt like my youth has, has been powerful and others when I felt mm -hmm. like it has been um, sort of a detriment. Um, I remember mm -hmm. I learned how to code this summer actually during COVID and that's something that I definitely was feeling insecure about um, because I am young. I'm 16 years old and learning how to code a website, learning how to code an app is not something a lot of teens um, kind of take advantage of but it's been a whole wonderful experience learning how to code because it's a way for students and uh, teenagers to spread awareness about issues that they're concerned about. And that's something that definitely has been hard, but you, you, for me personally, it's really been important that I overcome this because there are so many advantages towards actually learning how to code. And um, youth is not something that I wanted to, wanted to be a detriment to my organization and my work. Um, I've also had situations like the one I was talking about before with the EPA doctor, where definitely being the youngest person in the room has been difficult. And I felt like um, sometimes it, I didn't receive the amount of attention or respect that um, other adults are receiving in the same room. And that's been hard, but also being a youth, I've been able to connect with wonderful students that are really hardworking and that are passionate about the same issues and are willing to really um, take action when they mm -hmm. feel like it needs to be taken and um being able to harness that energy motivation has been wonderful and that's one of the reasons why we've been um growing and we've been spreading more awareness and had some success and i am really grateful that there are so many wonderful youth around me that um, are willing to put in the work so that hopefully we can create some change <laughs> Yeah, hopefully. And and it seems like you already are on that train, already are uh, creating change. And we'll continue speaking about your experience as well as the work that you're doing right after our short break. You're watching us on Galaxy 19, Satellite, Muslim Network TV, Amazon Fire TV, and Roku. We'll be right back. Our neighbors don't realize that Muslims are absolutely opposed to ISIS. Salam. My name is Abdul Malik Mujahid. I'm an Imam in Chicago. 16 shots! No me! No justice! No me! So how do we bring up the energy which uh, can really have an impact on the world? You need to build bridges of understanding among people, and we need to have America moving forward. That lesson learned has brought the strength of humanity to America, which is the diversity. 
Mujahid Talks only on Muslim Network TV Faithfully Connected Welcome back to Next Gen. I'm here with Alexandra Collins, who's the founder of Sato, along with her sister. And Alex, I want to ask you, what are some of your goals for the upcoming year? What do you hope to achieve? I hope to eventually pass legislation banning ethylene oxide emissions at least a three mile radius away from schools. Um, that is our overall goal. But oh, in right. the next year, we really do hope to expand our organization um, to represent more students in different states. We currently have 12 chapters um, across the United States and uh, two representatives in both Mexico and Guatemala. And I think it's really important in order to really advocate and lobby for stronger legislation that we have um, representation, or representation across different states, as well as the fact that um, in order to spread more awareness about the issue, we must also have representatives in different states. So mm -hmm. the goal for the, uh, the next year is to grow our organization and hopefully reach more um, states. <laughs> Yeah, and I think that that seems like a feasible goal, and, and I hope that, you know, you can work with other young people who are interested in this. Um, and I think that most people should be interested if it is a concern to their health and their well-being and the, the well-being of their family. But Alexandra, you also told us about the specialized, you know, um, the specialized initiative you're launching, ETO. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Sure. Um, so the ETO Free Project is a Seder sponsored project um, and it's a group of around six girls um, that are we are coded our own website and we're in the midst of coding our own app um, that has different reviews on ETO free beauty products. So we will contact different beauty brands and um, really make sure that they are not using ethylene oxide as part of the production process because ethylene mm -hmm. oxide is a sterilizer. And once we confirm that they do not use ethylene oxide as part of the production process, we review their products um, and we post them on Instagram. So I definitely recommend you check out our Instagram. It is um, ETO free. And um, on our Instagram, we have our video reviews. And then on our website, we have written and video reviews of these products. Um, this is really important, especially as a teenager, because a lot of teens suffer from um, acne and other skin conditions and it's important that they are using products that they know are safe and they know that are produced in a safe way that are not harming different communities and by having the reviews we hope that uh, young teens will kind of take the lead and are able to choose products that they know will work for their skin um, their particular skin type and skin issues and so that they can use safe products. <laughs> That is a beautiful initiative that you started, you know, doing these type of reviews keeps people engaged as well and allows them to, to buy products that are good for their health and their well-being. And you said like their skin um, as well. But you're doing all of this amazing work, uh, Alex. But how have you been able to sustain all of it in COVID? Has it been difficult for you and your organization? For sure, it's been difficult at times. Um, but particularly with Sato, it's been really helpful, too, because we've all gotten better at uh, video calls and mm. students from across different states of the U.S. We do have to do video calls, so that's been nice. Um, but for coding wise, on our for our organization, we've really become better at collaborating, and we found that that has also um, helped our output of our work. Um, for example, we use GitHub, which is known to be very glitchy yeah. <laughs> for coding, but we've become a lot better at pushing and pulling, and that's something that's definitely helped us um, with our teamwork and organization, and I'm really grateful for that. Um, of course, is COVID-19 has presented lots of challenges. It's important that we overcome them and we're flexible so that we can continue our important work. Yeah, I'm glad to hear that it's been able to, you know, bring you and those that you work with closer together and connect a bit more. Um, but what about other young people who want to get involved in your initiative, who too are passionate about this? How can they get involved? Yeah, I definitely recommend checking out our website, www.sato.org. Um, we have a section where you're able to contact us. We are totally open for uh, starting new chapters across the country, even across the world. So please feel free to go to our website and contest, 
contact us there, um, as well as leave a comment if you're interested in being a part of the ETO Free Project. We're always open to new members because there are lots of different important jobs that everyone on our team has, ranging from social media to product reviews to looking at research and the science behind things and coding. So really just I encourage you all to head to our website if you're interested in being a part of our project. <laughs> Awesome. And Alexandra, what is your final message, right, to young people who are watching, who might be inspired by the passion that you have and, and the hard work that you are doing? What is your uh, message to them? They might also be afraid, right, of their age, that that could be a barrier between what they want to accomplish and the work that they hope to do. What do you say to them? Well, I'd first like to say, um, don't be embarrassed. <laughs> that is the something that I live by every single day and it's really important it's something so simple to think about but once you implement it into your life you realize wow you're embarrassed a lot <laughs> and embarrassment really does stop you from doing a lot of taking a lot of action so that is my number one advice to give anyone that wants to start a project is passionate about something don't be embarrassed no matter what you look like no matter what your experience is no matter how much you know don't be embarrassed and don't be afraid to take action um, because you never know what will happen. And as long as you're passionate, as long as you're hardworking, and as long as you truly, truly believe in, in a, an issue or a problem, you'll end up creating change. And that's something that's beautiful. So don't be embarrassed and go out there and <laughs> create some change. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you so much to Alexandra Collins for being on our show today, for telling us about the phenomenal work her and her organization, Sato, is doing. Thank you, Alex. Thank you. And thank you so much to our viewers for tuning in in today's episode of Next Gen. And until next time, take care and assalamu alaikum. Peace be upon you all.